how are you? I'm good, thank you. What's your name? My name is Joe Little. I've come from the UK. Uh, we're in Alba at the moment, but I'm from, more specifically, I'm born in Leicester, um, which a lot of Italian people know because of Claudio Ranieri, uh, but I live in Brighton. I moved to Brighton in January from London after some time in London. Yeah. And I'm here tonight to perform. This is my first, I'm on tour, and this is the third show from my tour. Um, I played in Milan yesterday. I played in Turin on um, the day before that. I think I lost track of which day is which now. Uh, now we're in Alba, and um, I'm here with my band. I'm very much looking forward to uh, to playing to, to everyone here tonight. I've got one more show, one more show in uh, Cremona on Monday. I've never been to Cremona before, uh, so I'm, I'm very excited. But I have been here before, a long time ago. I came here, um, I used to play in a rock band called Peyote, um, and we recorded an album, and our managers uh, at the time, they invited a producer to work with us on our album, and the producer was a, a French, uh, he was Corsican, and he was called Henry Padovani. Um, and he produced with us the album and when he was talking about, he's quite well known in France um, and also a little bit here in Italy, he was also making his own music um, so he has a fan base and when he was working with us on our album to produce it with us, he was sharing information about us um, and so we got the attention of French and Italian uh, promoters so uh, we used to tour in Italy quite often. I think we did maybe five tours here in the space of a couple of years. Um, and this venue here is uh, one of the venues that I've played in before, probably about eight years ago. Yeah, I know, it's crazy being here and uh, it's still the same. <laughs> it's great, I love it. I like this venue a lot. Thanks. Which kind of music do you do now? Now, um, I'm still finding it hard to explain. I think uh, if I was to try and uh, attach a genre label to it, I would say that it's probably uh, indie rock forward slash pop, you know? Um, I used to play rock. I think live, I can't help but go a bit nuts, you know? But I think that my genre is unique in the way that it is me and it's my personality in the music. Um, Which is the main reference for this project? I think when I write music, when I approach music, I would love to be making music like Radiohead or something. But in reality, it probably comes out as a little bit... Because I write more about romance, which they don't. So in reality, what I come out with tends to be a little bit more... Uh, maybe a little bit more commercial than, than I intended to be. Um, but the important thing is, for me and my genre, is I want to be able to experiment with instruments. I want to be able to have one sound that sounds like me, and it doesn't matter if I use synths, if I use guitars, if I use drums or no drums, acoustic guitar, anything. So um, I would like to try lots of genres, but uh, for them all to sound like me. I think if that makes sense. Yeah. Didn't mean to disregard your feelings. If I'm selfish or self centered, I don't mean it. Cause I know that you love me till the end of the world. But I want to hear you say it again. Are you alone on stage or 
I you used are. to I used to play alone on stage when I started. The reason for that was just because uh, I was producing my songs on an acoustic guitar, and the reason for that was because it was very affordable to do that, and I had very low expectations. I just wanted to make music. I didn't expect anything from it. Um, now, kind of a couple of years later, I'm touring here with my band, and here at the moment there's three. There's Jamie here. He's filming me with his phone as well, and there's Veronica at the back there, who is uh, Lemia Ragazza, and my tour manager um, as well, and plays the keyboards and sings, and also produces music with me. Um, Jamie is the drummer. So there's three of us on stage at the moment. I play guitar and sing. What push you to make music? I guess the classic things, like it's fun, number one. Number two, it provides a sense of purpose, you know, if it, it creates, it helps me to find an identity and a purpose. But I think third, I honestly think the reason why I have to create music is because the more I do it, the more I discover more about myself and my potential and who I am. Uh, when I write a song, it's because I feel the need to write some about something. And uh, sometimes I can look back at what I've written and learn something about myself. Learn how I evolve, how I grow, how I learn. Um, but also I think because making music, I said it's fun, but it means that I get opportunities like this. I'm here in the north of Italy. Um, I've met amazing people. I've done things that I'm very proud of. I've uh, impressed people, you know, I've, I've inspired people, you know, so probably the The experiences that music gives me are, are incredible and I want to live my life like that. And But I think predominantly it's because making art means I learn and discover myself, which is important to me. Is it your job? No. I hope one day. At the moment, I mean, everybody knows that uh, making music is uh, not a very profitable business anymore, um, especially not at the level that, that I'm at. Um, I launched this project properly in 2022. You know, so I've played music all my life, but this project, I released a couple of acoustic songs in 2019, then coronavirus happened, so I paused and then started again in 2022, where I released my debut EP. Um, I do have a job, I work, uh, I do content production, uh, especially for an arts company, so at least I, I work in the arts world as well, outside of my music, so that's nice. In the past, which kind of project you take part of? When I started making music, uh, I started playing my guitar at open mics, uh, and then I was invited, I, tried to, I kept trying to start bands, rock bands, when I was a teenager, and they would start, and then we'd play one show, two shows, and then we'd break up. This mm. happened a lot. And then when I was 16, a friend of mine who was a saxophonist, Uh, invited me to join his ska band, or to start a ska band with him and his friends, mm -hmm. um, which I, as the singer, which I, I agreed to do. Um, and together we had this ska band, there was eight of us in the band, and it was really cool. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we used to get really messed up and play shows, and they were really crazy, and there was really loads of people there, and everyone was dancing, really high energy. Um, and that was kind of my induction into what felt like a successful project. So when I was like 16 and 17, we were a, a successful band in, in, in Leicester, uh, making okay money, uh, having a lot of fun, uh, doing good stuff. Um, then I went to university to study music and I formed a band there, a rock band. And during that time at university, we ended up being able to tour around in Europe, we were on TV in France playing a good hour and a half uh, dedicated show on France 3, um, which I believe is a, a fairly sizable channel over there. Um, and then when that band ended, I tried to launch a few other bands, but then I stopped music for a while before then doing this. Uh, I would love to be able to make electronic music. I'm trying to teach myself how to do that. I'd love to DJ. I'd love to do jazz. I learned how to do jazz piano to grade five after watching La La Land. I think I'd love to do everything at some point. Right. 
is your creative process? The process, yeah. The process to make music. I waste, uh, not waste a lot of time, I spend a lot of time just playing on my instruments and kind of humming melodies to myself. Um, and I will keep playing my guitar, keep playing any keyboards or other instruments. And yeah. if there's a, a melody that I like, or a sound that makes me feel something, then I can save it and I can kind of remember this. And then sometimes, sometimes it can take, sometimes a song can take five seconds, sometimes it can take a year. Um, so so, so I'll, the process is I'll, I'll create these melodies and then maybe I'll just have an idea and I'll write a song there and then, and then I'll refine it over the period of two weeks or so. But sometimes I'll write a melody and I won't come back to it until like a year later. You know, I'll find it in my voice notes on my phone, which is what I use mostly. I, I record everything that I do and I'll, come, I'll be listening through them and I'll hear it and I'll think, okay, that's cool. I'm going to go back to that now with some new perspective, with some new ideas and I'll go from there. And where do you take inspiration from? I think uh, if I was to look for a current theme in all of my songs, like what is my brand sonically, what's the sound of my brand, it's uh, probably this kind of romantic, kind of nostalgic, happy, sad kind of area. Um, and I don't know, I think when I want to write songs, I often think, oh, I want to be kind of intimate and whatever, but I don't know, it's like, I think the inspiration comes from this idea of, uh, I use visually, in a lot of my visual work, like stars and things like that, because it helps encapsulate this, this kind of transcendent quality. I don't know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big question where I take my inspiration from. I think it, it comes from like quite a deep place. Uh, so, yeah. Do you have um, a particular theme in your songs uh, about lyrics? Yeah, I mean that, like that, like yeah. I said, like, uh, like it's, I don't know, not, not specifically, I, something I do often is I write a song and somebody else will think it's a love song about oh. somebody else. Uh, but actually it might be about myself or about something else that I want to do. You know, like, uh, I will write a song to me, if that makes sense. So it's in the third person, I'm talking to someone, I think that's what third person is. No, it's not. It's Anyway, I'm talking to someone in my lyrics um, and people will tend to assume it's, a, it's me and somebody else that I'm engaged with in a relationship, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's me talking to myself. They have also a political meaning or social meaning yours. Just. No, no, no. They're, my songs are about uh, people feeling something uh, about themselves. They're intimate and they're in that respect. Are you afraid of the stage or...? Uh, actually, um, I'm terrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to... I've, I've made music and I've performed music for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, for, half, for more than half my life I've been getting onto stages. Um, and I used to not have a problem for a long time. Uh, but then uh, when I was kind of in my mid to late 20s, uh, a music, my music career had crumbled around me. And uh, I was kind of, I found myself in this situation where I was working in an office, in corporate business. Everything was grey and I was being kind of forced to behave like everybody else. And I had this moment where I kind of had this despair of like, what is going on? And I had a breakdown. And I started experiencing lots of panic attacks and anxiety from that time. And now I'm back performing, but it's with this new kind of like intensity inside me where now I weigh a lot more meaning on performing than I used to. Before it was totally casual, I, was, I didn't care. Like I'd just get on stage, have a great time. Like I didn't care if I was drunk, if I was tired, like I didn't care what I was playing, it didn't matter. But now it's like, I don't know what happened. Something twigged. Now it's more important to me. So uh, yeah, now I get very nervous before I go on, but when I get on, and if you see tonight, you'll see, when I go on, I, I, I instantly become very comfortable. On the stage, for you, the, the lights, how you dress, how you are on the stage are important. Yes, the appearance on the show is important for you 
you know. Yeah, do you know what? It's becoming more and more of a priority now. I think uh, when you start off as a as a as a, as a project, when you start a new project, you don't really know how it's going to look unless it's something which is very obviously and specifically like I don't know, like noir or like cyber or something or whatever. If it's not associated to a subculture that already exists then it's something which and it's something which is more vague in its concept when it when it when it's new it's harder to kind of to, to brand it so clearly in that sense but then the the, the 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 further you get into it the more you understand about what it is you're doing so clothing I just like to dress as me but I do have to obviously uh, kind of create a theme that people can understand as a brand is recognizable as me. But it's not like, I don't, I won't, I'm not gonna go on stage in like, uh, I mean again, it's something that can change as, as, as time goes on. But I've just, I've just bought, for example, a projector. Um, and when I do my concerts, I don't have it with me on tour, but when I do my concerts, I'm gonna start experimenting with, with certain imagery in the back. Um, so yeah, I think it is important, but for me it's something that I'm kind of, learning about and growing in doing you know as I discover and learn more and more about what it is that I'm actually doing because at the beginning I had no idea how do you manage uh, a tour I think uh, well this happened this tour happened because uh, it was you know it was organized for me the shows were organized for me um, the accommodation was organized for me exactly for example the rest of it is me asking just trying to make things happen where I can. I've got Jamie and Veronica here uh, helping me with everything. Um, it's not easy. I think we're all quite tired. Um, we had a good meal this morning, which was good. Uh, but uh, definitely a bit tired, but that's fine. I mean, it's, it's hard work, but I, it pays off. I think we're creating memories here that, um, that are what a lot of people dream about doing one day with their music. Um, I think this experience is incredibly valuable in a variety of ways. So yeah, it's hard. How do I manage? I've no idea, but uh, but yeah, it's all worth it. Lockdown. You, during that period, did you keep writing music or nothing? I wrote a lot of music during lockdown. Um, I I know that lockdown was awful, and obviously coronavirus was awful um, for so many people. Uh, but for me it was something which kind of came at the right time. I needed to, I, I'd just, you know, I'd just been through a pretty big period in my life um, and I needed to withdraw, I needed some quiet and alone time and I needed to regroup uh, before going outside again. So cave and no, zero social contact was exactly what I wanted, what I needed. Um, and I wrote a lot during that period of time, not necessarily to release but yeah, I wrote a lot. How do you see yourself in five years? I don't know. I think, you know, anything can happen. I think um, I'm going to keep doing this and we'll see what happens. Um, I, want to, I want to keep my expectations low in the sense that what I want to do is, I don't want to be like saying, oh, I want, to, I want world domination, I want to be doing whatever. I would be very, very happy with a small fan base of people who connect with me and my music and who support me and I would I can do things for them um, and I want to kind of really do a good job for them so I want to just focus and concentrate on building a community around me um, and creating art that I'm proud of you know and that I feel uh, is a good representation of me and what I can do that's my main goal and then whatever happens because of that is, you know, that, 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 that is good, that's great. You know, I'd love to have a team around me. I'd love to have a record label or a manager because I don't have any of those things at the moment. Um, and who knows what can happen. But, uh, but yeah, 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 I think I'm gonna keep my focus. I've been yours and nothing but real. So why do I feel so far away? Don't recognize the look on your face I don't know where I am, I don't know this place I found
found a feeling It's ordinary enough And it won't affect me much So I'll stay right here And pray you come around soon How do you see the music scene in London and in your hometown? In my hometown of Leicester, I mean I haven't lived there for a long time, not since I was 18, so a while ago now, but uh, the great thing about Leicester when I was growing up there was that uh, there was a lot of ska and reggae. Um, and in these days? And and these days I don't really know because I, I haven't been I haven't been back so much. There's I've got a network of, of musicians there. There is still people doing music, yeah. um, and actually I recorded uh, half of my first EP with friends of mine who are producers in Leicester. Um, shout out to Perry, CJ, and Brogan um, at Two Four Seven Studios. Uh, uh, so but I don't really know because I haven't been there for for a long time. I've just moved to Brighton two uh, months ago. Brighton? How about? Brighton, I've moved there because I've moved, I've moved there away from London and the reason I've moved away from London is just because I was there for quite some time and I do feel like with the, and I think a lot of people who are there would agree, um, I do feel that uh, the increasing of prices is causing venues to shut down, it's making life harder for musicians and artists to exist and to coexist um, and I think that sure we can still work hard in London to kind of live together in, in some kind of shared accommodation and create something, but it's changing the feel, the mood, the atmosphere of London. It's becoming much more corporate, it's becoming much more like, uh, you know, it's just, it, wine is great, I love wine, and wine bars are popping up everywhere, which are great, but they're not good for, they're not places where music and creativity happens. It's The food and wine culture is great in London, uh, but the art and music scene, I think, is not what it used to be. Uh, so the reason I've moved to Brighton is because some of the some of the venues that would have existed 15 years ago in London, but have now closed down. Those venues, they still exist in Brighton, um, and Brighton is a very small place where there's a lot going on. And uh, I think if I was having my hair cut in Brighton last month, and the hairdresser said to me, if live music were to ever die out completely from the UK. Brighton would probably be the last place to, do, to die. So I think, and I agree from having been there uh, for, for just two months, um, I've already met uh, some great people, uh, some very interesting people, some, you know, some very impressive and inspiring artists and musicians. So I'm excited to see what happens there. I mean, especially it's March now, it's January and February I've been there, it's a seaside town. So when the weather gets nicer, I'm sure uh, everyone will come, come outside. It should be a lot of fun. Social. Do you like the social network, Instagram, or Facebook? No, I hate or, it. It's awful. Or TikTok. Uh, it's awful. I mean, I have to say, it is Do fantastic. You use them? Yeah, I use them. I use them, um, and I have to say, it, it has been very useful. You know, I had someone at my at my show yesterday in Milan from Hungary, and they they flew because they saw me on TikTok and they liked my music, so they flew in from Hungary to to come and see me, and that's the that that was very sweet. I think. Uh, and TikTok is great for that. Um, and the good thing about TikTok as well is that uh, you can keep pushing things. You never, because it's always pushing you out to new people. Um, you can keep you can keep a campaign for it. You can keep re-releasing songs on TikTok, for example. Like in five years' time, if I wanted to start talking about a song that I released uh, five years ago, I can do that. So it's really useful tool for all that kind of thing. The problem is, is that people get obsessed with trying to keep on top of the algorithm. It's a shame that it has to be a priority now. I think the golden age was when you had YouTube and you had Google, so you could see videos and it allowed for all this creativity. But without it being all-consuming, time-consuming, I wonder if there's going to be a regression away from it. We've been saying maybe this is going to happen for a long time and it still hasn't happened. It's just actually gotten worse and worse. Uh, but we'll see because it's... Tech is you know, with AI and everything. Like, who the fuck knows what's going to happen in music? I think everyone is feeling like they have no idea what's going to happen. Music's already been music's already been kind of ruined by streaming. 
uh, you know, it's already been ruined by social media has changed the way that things have happened. I mean, another bad thing about social media as well is the fact that uh, it's changed the way that people write songs. Now you've got, uh, no one cares about song craft anymore because a song only needs to be one minute long. Uh, exactly. And if you, people write songs differently, they think, how can I write a song that I can make go viral? You know, how can I write a song that I can create a trend to? This is the problem. This is what, this is how it's, it's messing with music. There's no stories anymore. It's just about, it's, it's just about quick virality. And I desperately hope that it changes from that. I mean, but aside from that, then you've got AI coming out, you know, which people are writing songs on AI anymore. People don't even write songs. Uh, everything is bland. The machine is a mess. I think everyone agrees, apart from the people who are benefiting from it. But I mean, it depends on what you make music for. Is it just to make money, or yeah. is it for uh, for 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 something else? I don't know. Do you have any project for the future? Uh, I'm going to keep doing this thing, and I, I will see where that takes me. I want to keep experimenting with it and trying that. But one day, do you know what I've always wanted to do? One day, I've always wanted to uh, to. Um, to do some jazz. I've always wanted to do some jazz and I've also always wanted to make some electronic music. I don't know what, jungle, uh, <laughs> garage, I don't know. I love, I love all of that. Um, I listen to, mostly the music I listen to is ambient music. Um, I love ambient music and I would love to be able to have the patience to make ambient music. Um, so yeah, very high on my priority list is to learn how to do electronic music. Did you re re release something recently? I released a song 10 days ago, eight days ago, only eight days ago, called Notice Me. Um, and this tour in the north of Italy is one of the things which is in uh, promotion of that song. It's the second song, the second single from an upcoming EP that I'm going to release in uh, the summer. Um, can't really say what the name is yet or anything like that, but uh, it's coming. Um, and this is the second song from it. It's important to me, this song, because um, it's previously, from my first EP, I had an issue where, uh, where all the songs online are quite soft, like acoustic guitar, gentle, but then if people come and see me perform on stage, it's much more energetic, there's a lot more going on. So Notice Me was quite important for me to put out. I needed to put it out because it's a rock song. And I wanted people to know that I don't just play quiet, sensitive acoustic music. You know, I do more than that. So the purpose of this EP, one of the main priorities of this EP is that I want to tell people more of who I am, you know. Leave us a free singer or music project that we have to know. One of my, okay, so there's a, a, a bit of a variety because, um, okay, so these are things, these are things that really inspire me, mm -hmm. but are very different to the music that I make Perfect. on the surface. So uh, there's an ambient artist that I'm very into at the moment, who I really like, uh, called Malibu. Malibu. I, would, I would check that stuff out. That, that, her music really inspires uh, some of the things that I do in the way that they make me feel. Um, another artist uh, that is, has always inspired me, um, and is very famous, uh, is Lee Scratch Perry. Um, of course, um, I think what all, what I always loved about Lee Scratch Perry um, is that he was always unashamedly himself, and he was chaotic. He was he was nuts, but he would always and even when he became super famous, he didn't move into some big house and become a celebrity. He stayed in his house in Kingston, I think it was in in Jamaica or whatever. I don't know where exactly, but. Um, he stayed in his house, had his home studio, and he would just make music at home, always. So he, he kind of like died doing it the way that he started, but along that, that way, it inspired people all over the world and he's become an icon. And I think that um, that's inspiring in the way that he was always just so committed to, he, he didn't care about anything apart from making music and mm. having fun with it, because some of his stuff is so much fun. Um, and if I had to choose a third one, I think uh, I think I would say listen to some of my stuff if uh, if possible. Um, Veronica, I'll say Veronica. That's a good third one. Veronica, who is with me on tour at the moment, is also an artist. Uh, come, come, Veronica. Uh, Veronica. Veronica is also a solo artist. So. Um, see. <laughs>
Uh, just, just to say hello quickly. Ciao. This is Veronica. <laughs> um, Veronica is also a solo artist and uh, has music online and is releasing hey. uh, more music. So uh, where we can find we can find you uh, on Spotify, on Instagram, and TikTok as well. My Instagram is Veronica Music with two eyes in music. Yeah, okay. and on Spotify, it's just Veronica. On Spotify is just Veronica. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> um, so, um, where we can find your music? So, uh, mine is Joe Little, everywhere. So I, I'm on. I'm, I use I use predominantly Instagram and TikTok. Uh, on Instagram and TikTok, my handle is underscore Joe Little underscore. Um, on Insta on so on Spotify, it's just Joe Little, and uh, that's my real name. It's uh, not. People here always think Joe Little's a stage name, but it's not. It's a real. It's my real name that I was born with. Um, and yeah, J O E L I T T L E. Okay. Thank you so much. Very See welcome. you on stage. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. Bye.